In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct a Pearson correlation analysis in R. Now, in addition to conducting the analysis to estimate the correlation coefficient, I'm also going to test the assumption of normality associated with the Pearson correlation analysis. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit with respect to how robust the Pearson correlation is to deviations from normality. So if you want to skip to the correlation analysis, strictly speaking, you just want to know the line of code and how to interpret the results, I'll put a note in the video at which point you should jump to if you just want to know that. But for those of you who want to see all the steps associated with testing the hypothesis that there's an association between two variables scored on an interval ratio or even possibly ordinal scale, you'll want to watch from the beginning starting here. So the first thing you want to consider is the possibility that you have objects in memory within R and that could cause you potentially to get results that are different to what I'm going to show here. So if you're getting results that are different or results that you think are wrong, you should do this rm command to remove pretty much all objects in R's memory to make sure that the commands that you're executing aren't referencing objects that you don't know are actually in R's memory. So I'm not going to do that now because I actually started up R from scratch so there's nothing in its memory right now. And so the first step is to actually collect the data. Now I'll mention that these data that I simulated for this example are actually based on a real study. And so this study is from Rose and Tremawan, which is, I think, 1996. And what they were interested in was the association between the distinctiveness of a face, how distinctive it looks, and how attractive it's rated. And so here we might hypothesize a negative correlation if you're familiar with the literature. And we'll check out what the correlation was that Rose and Tremawan actually reported in that study. So to get those data that I simulated to correspond to that study, you can use the read.csv command because I've got the data in a CSV file. And what I'm going to put into R's memory is this table of data, which is going to be called my underscore data. And I've got header equal true because I've got the variable names at the top of the file. And so let's copy this line of code. So this is me, step two, get some data. I'm going to copy this and put it into R and what's going to happen is it's going to open up a window for me and I'm going to take this data. So this again is the data file that I created to correspond to that study and there are two variable names at the top of the CSV file. So now if I write my underscore data I get a data table with 60 rows of data 1 to 60 and here are the ratings of distinctiveness and the ratings of attractiveness. And the hypothesis is that there's an association between these two variables. Scored, yes, on an ordinal scale, but it's a seven point. There are values as high as seven. So that's a fairly informative ordinal scale, and I would say it's appropriate to conduct a Pearson correlation analysis in this case. So the next step is to evaluate normality. Now, strictly speaking, the Pearson correlation does assume normally distributed data. But as it turns out, it's fairly robust to deviations of normality under certain conditions. And so what I've got here is I've got a function that estimates descriptive statistics in R. And in particular, it estimates skew and kurtosis, which R doesn't do naturally within the base commands available in R. So I had to modify this function in such a way to estimate skew and kurtosis, and I know exactly what skew it's calculating. It's adjusted Fisher Pearson skewness coefficient, which is what SPSS does, and it also estimates the excess sample Pearson kurtosis. Again, that's what you would get from SPSS. So, in order to get these descriptive statistics, you just need to copy and paste. So, I've got that function into its memory, and I'll just mention one thing here is that I've called this function dstats. And this is putting all these functions into R's memory. And so when I call dstats in other functions, it knows to execute these commands or this arithmetic. So now I need to specify the variables that I want to analyze. And they are called distinctiveness and attractiveness. These are the two variables that are named in the CSV file. And this is how you name it in R. And I'm calling my variables my vars, my variables. So I'm going to copy this and put that in R and then click enter and that has put that into R's memory and now the next command will actually estimate the descriptive statistics with your data. Now 
you may or may not call your data file my underscore data. You can if you want, but what you have to make sure is that you are correctly referencing the data table in R here. So I've got my data, which I called my data up here when I opened up that CSV file and loaded it up into R. And I've got my vars, which is corresponding to these two variables, distinctiveness and attractiveness, because I called it here. And then I've got dstats, which is the function that I want to execute on these variables, my vars. So now I'm going to use the sapply function to actually get the descriptive statistics associated with these variables. And so here's the minimum, the maximum, 1 to 7, 1 to 7. I've got a mean of 4.06 for distinctiveness looking faces and attractiveness is lower, 3.8. Here's the median for both. Now this standard deviation, STDP, is the population. You'd ignore that. These values were calculated for the purposes of estimating skew and kurtosis in a way that is similar to SPSS, in fact, essentially exactly SPSS. So, and then we've got the standard deviation for the sample, 1.19 and 1.31 for attractiveness, and finally kurtosis. Now, skewness and kurtosis, what you should be looking for are values that are less than absolute values of skew of 2.0 and kurtosis 9.0. And I base this on research that's been done to evaluate the robustness of the Pearson correlation. And based on my review of the research in my textbook, Chapter 5, Bivariate Correlation, I find that the Pearson correlation under certain conditions is robust to violations of normality from 2 to 9, skew and kurtosis. And you can get this chapter free of charge if you actually go to howtostats.com and you go into chapters. You can get all the chapters just by clicking on the table of contents and you'll get links to these chapters. So if you want to learn more about this normally distributed data assumption associated with SKU and a lot of other things, you can go to that chapter. And I also have videos associated with each of the chapters. Well over 350 videos are linked to the textbook chapters that are all freely available. So I've satisfied the assumption of sufficient normality on the basis that the skew is much less than 2.0 and the kurtosis is much less than 9.0. So the next step would be to actually conduct the Pearson correlation. And I'm using the core test command in R because that is the way to get a correlation with a p-value as well as the confidence intervals. And so you can see here that I've got core.test and I'm naming the variables that I'm specifically interested in in this data file. So it's my underscore data with a dollar sign and the name of my variable distinctiveness and then my underscore data dollar sign attractiveness that's the second variable and I'm telling R to estimate Pearson correlation you want to be clear that you're estimating the Pearson and not something else near the confidence levels associated with the Pearson correlation of 0.95 and I just got use equal all observations as the final specification in the command so now I'm just gonna copy that and paste and this will give me the results. And so here I've got the Pearson's product moment correlation. And the estimate is 3.2 rounded, which implies that higher levels of distinctiveness are associated with lower levels of attractiveness. So the more distinctive a face is, on average, it tends to be viewed as less attractive. And this Pearson correlation is associated with a T value of negative 2.54. Now, people might not know that the correlation is actually tested against the t distribution, so don't be confused here. This isn't a t test in the sense of the test of the difference between two means. It's simply using the t distribution to evaluate it for the purposes of statistical significance. And with 58 degrees of freedom, the p value is equal to 0 0.01372, or just 0 0.014 rounded. So because this p value is less than 0 0.05, I would declare a statistically significant result. And so this correlation of negative 0.32 can be suggested to be statistically significant and then interpreted. Now finally, here are the confidence intervals associated with the Pearson correlation. And I think this is important to note that there are programs out there estimating 95% confidence intervals and calculators on the web that aren't doing it entirely accurately. And I can verify that R is in fact estimating the confidence intervals accurately. And so that's a good thing. So that is how you can conduct a Pearson product moment correlation in R. Now you can get your hands on this command file with descriptions in it, as well as the data file that I used in this example, as well as a write-up of the results. 
This is the beginning of the results section of the write-up. So this is a full write-up, about 200 words. And there'll also be a video of me walking you through the results in terms of writing up a test of the hypothesis of the association between two variables. Finally, I also include the Bashara and Hittner reference in the reference section of the write-up that I created. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll catch you next time.